Hi everyone and welcome to the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co. This is a podcast primarily about knitting. We do have a tiny bit of non-knitting related content today, which is a little bit exciting, but for the most part, we're just talking about knitting. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back and spending some more time with me. And if this is your first episode, welcome. I hope you enjoy. Um, pour yourself a beverage of choice. I think this is going to be a bit of a bumper Christmas episode today because I accidentally have a bunch of stuff to talk about. I've got some coffee in this nice little festive mug. It's a Sunday morning here in uh, Brisbane, Australia, where I am from and I live. And it is, I intended to start filming this a little bit earlier in the day because it has started to get hot. It has been a really hot couple of days, um, like in the high 30s centigrade or Celsius. Is it centigrade or Celsius? I've always wondered. Anyway, in the high 30s, um, it's looking at, like it will ease off a little bit for Christmas next week, so it'll probably only be in the high 20s, but it's still going to be super humid, which is kind of just how it is. But um, yeah, I was hoping to film this earlier in the day so you couldn't slowly watch um, the face sweat <laughs> develop on my face, but very fortunate that you will. So as I said, pour yourself a beverage of your choice, no judgment here, and we will crack on with some knitting chat because I do have a couple of really exciting projects to share with you. Returning viewers will recognize that the first thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm actually wearing. I finished it, I seamed it literally this morning, so it is brand new, fresh off the needles, my Christmas tank top. Um, so this is a pattern that I vaguely kind of Frankenstein put together myself. Um, I wouldn't say that I drafted anything because that's definitely not a skill that I have, but I did use a couple of different patterns as inspiration to create this really nice tank top. It's got a V-neck, a nice, nice covered shoulders, which I like. Um, the armholes are quite deep, which is also something that is my personal preference. And I'll just stand up. You can see it's got a very, very light A-line down to a ribbed edge. Um, I knit it in pieces. I left a little slit on the side of the ribbing, but the kind of the feature, the best part is this amazing Christmas tree that's on the front. And it's knit in reverse stockinette with the tree in regular stockinette, so it has an almost embossed effect which is really nice and subtle but still really really fun for Christmas as you can see it's reverse stockinette all the way around I'm really happy with how the seams came out in the reverse stockinette mattress stitch which I've never had to do before um, and yeah I'm really happy with the neckline the one thing that I'm a little bit I'd say it's 99% finished because I'm not 100% happy is the sleeve caps the edges of the sleeves um, because it's knit in reverse stockinette, the tendency of this is to roll inwards, which on one hand looks kind of cool because it creates kind of like a mock eye cord effect on the sleeves. And look, to anyone else it's not super noticeable, but I'm, I'm thinking it's going to bother me a little bit. So I may still pick up the stitches around and just knit some sort of edging on just to hold them a bit more, excuse me, hold them a little bit flatter. But other than that, I'm super stoked. It's really comfy to wear, really nice and breezy. As you can see, I've got it on with denim shorts today. It'll look cute over skirts and things. So I'm really excited. So let's talk about the pattern. The uh, chart for this Christmas tree, I stole, borrowed, um, didn't steal. I paid for, paid for the pattern for the Yulgren sweater by Andy Sutherland. And so I took the chart for that and kind of used those as the proportions to start the tank top. Um, for the proportions and vague um, basic construction outline of the tank top, I used the um, Sloper by Karen Templer from Fringe Association, which is a free pattern that gives you the outline for knitting a kind of heavyweight tank top. So the yarn that I used is Cartier Linen, 
um, which is a cotton linen blend and I held it double. It's about a DK weight. I held it double and the colour is called Sage, which I think is so pretty. It's just a really nice soft olivey green, which is once again like a little bit Christmassy but not in your face, which is definitely my style. Um, I knit it on, let me just check about the Ravelry page here because I knew I wouldn't remember. I knit it on 6mm needles and 5.5 for the ribbing and I'm just super, I'm really stoked with how it's turned out. As whenever you're kind of modifying a pattern yourself, it's 50-50 how it's going to turn out, um, but I'm really, really stoked with how this went. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy to have this to wear for Christmas and all of the notes for everything I did and the outline of how I put it together are on my Ravelry project page. So if you're wanting to make any sort of tank top for yourself, you can go over there and just have a look. I didn't really do anything revolutionary, so I just popped some notes on my Ravelry project page. I'm sure any of you could work out how to do it yourselves with a little bit of nitty common sense. Um, I'm, I am really happy with how it's turned out because it's in reverse stockinette and it is in a yarn that is a cotton linen blend. Um, it's not super forgiving so there are some bits where because I knit it, I knit it flat so I was doing um, well, flat knitting, the row gauge isn't 100% consistent um, and normally if it's on the stockinette side that's not super obvious but because it's on the reverse stockinette side there are some bits where you can tell must have been real angry um, when I knit a couple of rows but at the end of the day the only person who's going to notice that is me no one else is going to notice and I'm just really thrilled that I have something fun and Christmassy to wear for the celebrations for the holiday season this year so that's finished object number one and we have drum roll a finished object number two I also this one I would also say is 99% finished because I have not woven in my ends, but it is da the Deauville tank. It is so gorgeous, you guys. I love this so, so much. So this is the Deauville tank. It's a pattern by Tina C from issue 25 of Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. And I knit it in the same yarn as the sample, which is Shiny Happy Cotton by Wool and the Gang in the colours Cinder Black, which is a black, and Purple Haze, which is this really pretty pale purple. And I am just so, so thrilled. Please excuse my ends. Um, I will weave them in, I promise. But I just wanted to show you guys this amazing, amazing tank top. So it is knit in the round um, and in... Uh, just striping the purple and black and then it has these really cool little pearl ridges that create this amazing vertical stripe kind of TV staticky optical illusion effect of vertical stripes and as you can see as it moves if you imagine this is a person walking and not me holding a tank top how cool that effect is it has a really nice v-neck at the front there's no picking up around the armholes or the neck the neckline so you kind of just knit it bind off the shoulders and you're done which I also love it's just really satisfying I knit this on five millimeter needles which I believe is the recommended needle size and yeah I didn't do anything I just did exactly what the pattern told me to do um, made absolutely zero no modifications I knit the size it's the third from the end, so I think it was size number five. Um, so yeah, this, yeah, which is easier to count third from the end than five, fifth from the beginning um, when you're reading the pattern. It is, I don't think these ones are available. I don't think issue 25 is available for individual sale yet, but I'm sure you can still get a digital copy of Pom Pom Quarterly. This whole issue, the stripes issue was just, there are so many beautiful patterns, so many gorgeous summer tops in that in that issue of the magazine and yeah I just don't have anything else to say about this one really um the fits really nice it's quite it doesn't have quite as dropped an armhole as this tank top but it's a similar kind of a little bit of ease um knit in a nice um breathable natural um plant fiber which once again means that not as kind of forgiving 
to knit with. I know a lot of people don't like knitting with linen and cotton. I really do. I don't have an issue with it at all. Um, switching between wool and linen if you're knitting a few projects at the same time is a bit interesting because you do have to hold, I mean your gauge, the way that you hold the yarn will be different because the different fibres behave differently but I mean I really like it and just everything about this is really, it's a really simple, really simple knit um, but so effective and just looks amazing. Um, I really, yeah, and the pattern is written so well. Um, Tina is a really great pattern designer and really fun on Instagram as well. Um, I don't know what else to say other than I'll just hold it up one more time. I really, really, really love it. So I would highly, highly recommend. And also if you're looking for kind of a worsted weight cotton yarn to work with, I would highly, highly recommend the, um, Shiny Happy Cotton by Wool and the Gang because it's not super splitty, it's not super dusty as some cotton yarns can be and I just I'm so stoked and cannot cannot wait to wear this when I sit down and weave in all my ends. So that's all my finished objects for this week but I think that's pretty impressive. Finishing two garments is I just feel so relieved and satisfied and I definitely feel now like ready to do some casting. So despite the fact that I finished two garments this fortnight, I do have a couple of works in progress to talk about. The first one is, will not be a surprise to anyone who has watched the last couple of episodes. It is this little mitten. Um, if you are a new viewer, or you're not aware, I've been knitting um, these little mittens as tree ornaments for people. The pattern that I've used is Kathy Lewinsky's Mitten Garland Advent Calendar. I've just taken the little advent calendar numbers off and knit these little mittens and then just seamed up the tops so people can hang them on their Christmas trees. Most of them have gone to their homes now. Um, I've given them to some family and to my co-workers. Um, and this one probably be for my auntie. Um, I do have a couple more that I want to knit but I'm just burnt out on these mittens. I've had a couple of quite like full-on weeks so I've just been really tired, not feeling very well. And so I just didn't want to be knitting anything that I wasn't feeling really excited about. And I am just kind of, they're really cute and a really good gift, but I'm just over knitting them. Um, the yarn is just the, um, a cotton acrylic yarn from Spotlight, which is one of the big kind of commercial craft stores here in Australia. So it's nothing special, probably not amazing to, it's not amazing to knit colour work with, but it's very functional for what I want it to, what I want to use it for. And so this little guy just needs a thumb, which is easy. The thumbs take about 15, 20 minutes to do. Um, and yeah, maybe I will knit a couple more for some people, but I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't, because I've knit a lot of these and I'm just... I am done but they are really really cute so yeah that's one work in progress and the second one that I have is my kind of on the go knitting project that I'm loving it's just a self striping vanilla sock but the yarn is what this is all about it is just this absolutely gorgeous self striping yarn so this is from Ashley of Nomadic Yarns and her in her colorway Honey Bear and it's just so pretty. It's so adorable. I'm so, so glad that I got some. Um, and so I'm just knitting my regular vanilla sock kind of formula for this. Um, so I'm on two millimeter needles because I do like a nice tight gauge on my socks and at 64 stitches. I've got about 20 rows of two by two rib for the cuff then straight down. I'm probably going to do a fish lips kiss heel on this guy. Um, I'm just going to do a couple more rows of a couple more stripes I should say and then do the heel. I've knit the leg a teensy bit longer than I typically do just because I really want to show off this super sweet yarn but I mean that's a it's so pretty I'm really enjoying it really enjoying knitting on it um, because I just love looking at it and Ashley is just a dye wizard um, She's so good at self-striping yarns. Um, the joins are just fl like flawless. She's is, she is really, really amazing, a really talented dyer. If you love a good self-striping yarn, I definitely recommend checking out Ashley's yarns. So 
The other not quite works in progress, I spoke last week about the project that I want to cast on for the Yarn & Co Make Along, which is a make along that's being run by a yarn shop here in Australia over our summer months um, for a kind of a nice cozy winter garment. I did talk about it a bit more last week. Um, I have it. I did swatch and I did get gauge because as I said last time I was having a bit of trouble getting gauge but I managed to sit down when I was feeling nice and good and relaxed and did some knitting and I got gauge so I will be knitting it on six millimeter needles which I think is a size smaller than the pattern recommends yeah it is a size small. I think the pattern recommends a 6.5. So I will be knitting it on a size smaller needle, which is not my usual, not my usual jam, but um, I am knitting with Quarry, which is a slightly different yarn to knit with because it is quite loosely spun, so you just have to be quite careful. But I'm knitting it with Quarry in this colour Serpentine, which is not showing up today. The light's a bit, a little bit bright, but um, really pretty yarn but the reason I wanted to show you this was I wanted to show you my I would say my Christmas present to myself but when you're ludicrously self-indulgent year-round is it a Christmas present I got a new field bag in the amazing toffee color I've wanted one for so long and I was on this Gain Sisters website which is a yarn shop based out of Sydney that stocks all of the Fringe Association stuff and they had some in stock and I was just in the mood feeling spendy and so I've wanted this colorway this color bag for so long I'm really glad I got it and I did get a little pin as well I'm not normally a pin person but this is one I think oh god what's the light doing there we go so the brand's called knit two together and it just says knit in these really pretty pastel -y colors which goes super well with the toffee um my second fringe bag I do have the camo one which I love to death and I've just wanted the this color for so long so She's all mine now, and as I said, it's kind of a Christmas present to myself, but I, as with most adults, you know, if you want something, kind of get it for yourself when you can. So, very, very happy with that. So, the next thing, I have two more things I wanted to talk about. Oh, actually, that's a lie. I have one more work in progress that I want to show you. This is the non-knitting related one, so bear with me one second. I decided for Christmas, at the very last minute, that I wanted to do a cross stitch for my mum. So I have it here. Um, oh great, it's at a really useful stage. So it just has that line from A Midsummer Night's Dream um, that says, Though she be but little, she is fierce. From when the fairies are fighting in that play. Not my favourite Shakespeare play, but my mum really loves that line. So I wanted to make her a little cross stitch. And this one has the quote in the middle and has some nice orangey warm toned flowers around the outside. But ladies and gents, I forgot how long cross stitch takes. <sighs> it is so slow and I don't have great lighting at night time. So while I've been at work, it's actually been really hard to find time to work on this because in the evenings, um, I can do a little bit, but it does get quite difficult. Um, I'm doing this on 16 count um, fabric, cross stitch fabric, um, which normally a lot of people prefer to do on, most patterns are written for 14 count, but I just think 16 count looks better, um, personal preference. But it is, does mean the holes are quite small and I don't want to fry my eyeballs in, I don't have like a really bright cross stitch light. If I wanted to be doing cross stitch at a lot, um, I would probably invest in a nice bright, even magnifying light to do it with at night time. But I'm not, I go through phases with cross stitch. I will be in the mood to do it and I will do some. But basically, yeah, I completely forgot so less than two weeks before Christmas, I decided that I wanted to make this for my mum. I found the pattern on Etsy. I'll link to the seller down below because I would just be making it up. If I told you a name, I don't remember at all, but I will definitely link it down below. It's a really nice pattern, really well written. It looks really cute and um, 
people who've purchased it before and posted their finished projects, they all look really good. So I was pretty confident in buying it. Um, but as I said, because I've I only just finished work at the end of this week, um, I haven't had a lot of daylight crafting time. So because it is the middle of summer, we do have long days. I, for a few days, got up at 4.30 in the morning, which is about when the sun comes up, made myself a coffee to do two hours of cross stitching before I went to work. So I think that's why I got so burnt out at the end of this last week and I feel I feel really congested and awful um, because I was just not really sleeping because I was like I have to get this done for my mum but then I realized that that is ludicrous so I did I have told my mum that she does have a handmade gift coming that will be a work in progress under the tree and she is a maker too so she is very understanding she has no idea what it is um, but as I said I just there are not enough hours in the day and it is not worth losing sleep and sanity over making someone a gift um, because yeah I haven't even finished the text yet and then there is a big old floral border which is gonna take a long time as well so this will be a continuing work in progress it will be wrapped up tomorrow and popped under the tree very briefly I do want to try and get the text finished for her for tomorrow so I may wake up super early tomorrow and or just spend this afternoon um, getting the word though and the word theist done so she can at least have see what it's gonna say so that is my big Christmas make for this year um, I'm really stoked it's gonna be really pretty and she's gonna love it but as I said, definitely not worth losing sleep and sanity over making people presents. People understand. Just tell them. Just wrap a work in progress. People will just be flattered that you've spent time on them. It's probably a bit late in the game because Christmas is tomorrow, but that is my advice to you. Don't, don't drive yourself insane trying to finish people's Christmas presents in time. It's not worth it. So as I said, this is going to be a bit of a bumper episode because there are a couple more things that I would like to talk about with you. The first one is my favourite makes of 2018. So I did make a whole bunch of things that I really love and have gotten a lot of wear out of this year. You can have a look on my, on my Ravelry project page to see all of the projects that I finished this year. But I just wanted to share two that I really loved and probably got the most use out of this year. The first one is this here. So this is the Quadri hat by Michelle Wong. It's this amazing Aran weight cabled hat. Um, it's a super popular pattern I think. I really love the cable motif. I think it's just so lovely and the hat fits really really well. <clears throat> And I don't even remember if I knit, there's two sizes and I would be lying if I told you which one. I, I think I knit the larger one. Um, and the yarn that I used is also gorgeous. It is from Fibersmith, a shop in Melbourne. It is Leslie's hand dyed yarn. This colour is called Depths and it's on her Aran Weight 100% Australian Merino. I'm not 100% sure who supplies her Merino. It feels like millpost merino, but I don't think they do an Aran weight, so it could be white gum wool maybe. I'm not 100% sure who supplies her, or it could be another not super well-known um, merino farmer, but it's 100% ethically sourced Australian merino, and this colour is so lovely. It's like a really deep grey. I don't think it's showing up because it is blowing out a bit. It's like a super deep grey that has little flecks of really dark browns through it. So it looks really nice and murky. And I love this hat. I've gotten so much wear out of it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And even though it has that little merino halo, it hasn't really peeled much at all. I mean, hats don't peel as much as other garments, but I just, I love this hat so much. And I'm so happy with it. I do have a, probably enough of this yarn left over to make I did get two skeins and I think I just I did alternate a little bit because I wasn't sure if um, one skein was gonna be enough and it probably would have been but I might have been playing a bit of yarn chicken so I do have kind of another hundred grams of this to play with to make another hat probably 
but I really this is probably my favorite make of the year I've absolutely loved wearing this hat and yeah the pattern's amazing the yarn's amazing love it the other favorite project I have I knit right at the beginning of the year for the Kanga Kiwi knit along which is a knit along that's hosted by Wool Gathering Australia um, to celebrate both Australian and New Zealand yarns and Australian and New Zealand um, pattern designers so that's kind of the that was the premise I think they might be doing it again in the new year but it's to a, both a pattern and a yarn by um, people from business owners from Australia and New Zealand and yeah it's a really fun knit along people knit some gorgeous stuff but I knit this amazing shawl in this beautiful color it does need another block so I'm really not showing this off I apologize Jess that I'm not showing your um, shawl off to the full capacity but this is the Euradler shawl by the wonderful Jessica Gore of the sweater collective it's this great like crescent shaped shawl with this beautiful lace panel up the center and lovely lovely garter stitch all up the sides and then this super cute bobbly border and I knit this in Milpost Merino 4 ply in the apricot colorway which is such a unique beautiful color I'm not usually an orange person but this is just lovely it's showing up a teensy bit brighter on camera than it is in real life but it is a really nice like burnt ochre orange um, and I love this shawl I've worn it so much I usually when I'm walking to work when it's a bit chilly just I wear it like this which very nice and cozy but also if you're going out in the evening and you just want a little something it also looks great worn this way because with the little bobbles it has almost like a poncho -y effect and I've gotten so much wear out of this shawl um, Milpost Merino is just gorgeous it is the most beautiful Merino it is so soft the um, the owners of Milpost seem like really wonderful people um, and they're just some really really beloved sheep um, I know they do a lot of work with the traditional owners of the land of the area where the farm is um, that is in New South Wales I'm not super so not as familiar but it is like a just really great really great property um, and just absolutely beautiful yarns in really fun colors so I've worn that so so much and I absolutely love it and I'm so so stoked with both of these projects everything I've knit this year I've loved but these two definitely my most worn and most beloved makes of 2018 now I do have one last thing that I would like to speak about before I let you go for today and for the year which is unbelievable this year has gone so quickly but I did want to talk about kind of some knitting plans that I have on the horizon for 2019 I don't have any goals I haven't really thought about them yet I do love I love new year I love thinking about the year ahead and wondering what what's gonna happen and kind of using it as a time to really reflect on things in your life that are going well things that aren't going so well and ways that you can improve them um, probably one of my favorite holidays of the year is New Year's so but I do like to get through Christmas first before I really sit and relax and think about what I'm gonna do with the new year but I did want to talk about projects upcoming projects that I will definitely be working on I have vaguely mentioned before that I don't really have a yarn stash I'm starting to get one and it's stressing me out um, I don't like having a lot of stuff and especially with yarns I like to be quite intentional with my purchasing so I like to buy things with a specific project in mind um, that's why quite often I do um, work my project in the same yarn as is used for the sample um, because if I like the way it looks and I like the way it feels um, I don't like to kind of buy things and then not know what to do with them so I am very much a project specific purchaser but I think because I've been a little bit stressed the last few months I've done quite a bit of purchasing on top of what I already had so some of this yarn has been in my possession for a really long time um, some of it like over a year but I have had a plan for it but this is the year that I'm just going to 
work through, especially for the first few months of the year, really work through what I have. So, who will I talk about first? Let's go for the one I've had in my stash for the longest. So this is beautiful alpaca from Adagio Mills in Orange in New South Wales. Um, there we go. That's, that's a nice representation of the colour. So this is their colour Sonata. And um, Adagio Mills are a really amazing, really amazing company. Um, they, it's an alpaca farm. They also have their own mill that they have crowdfunded and built themselves to spin their, originally they did it to spin their own yarn. And also they um, now are available for other farmers to use or other um, yarn suppliers to use to spin their yarn. Because um, a lot of the, there were a lot of um, wool mills in Australia in the past, but a lot of them have been shut down and outsourced overseas. So, Adagio are an amazing, amazing company. It's run by a couple. I know it's Nadia is the wife's name. I'm not sure of her husband's name. Um, and all of their colorways are natural, are undyed. So, just from blending the um, fiber from the alpacas in their flock, they create a beautiful spectrum of greys and browns. This is a beautiful kind of light mid-grey in the, this is their shade Sonata. And this is going to grow up. I've got a sweater's quantity of this, and it's going to grow up to be a white horse sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Um, I've wanted to knit this jumper for, I've had the pattern purchased for years. I've wanted to knit it for the longest time. I originally bought this yarn to knit a different jumper out of, but I just wasn't really feeling it anymore. So I think this beautiful grey colour will look really great and the kind of style and fit of the white horse I think will be work really well with the alpaca. So this is going to be a beautiful light grey white horse jumper and I really want to cast that one on quite soon because as I said, it's been in my stash for quite a long time. So speaking of Caitlin Hunter, I have this yarn, which is at a different end of the scale. It's some um, Knit Picks Lindy chain that I got on sale a little while ago. So it is um, a cotton linen blend, I believe. Yes, so 70% linen, 30% cotton, and it's a chained structure yarn. Because it's thin, you're probably not going to be able to see that. But this I have purchased to make a tenure out of and I've wanted to make a tenure for the longest time and when I actually do cast this on I will tell you the long depressing tale of my quest for a tenure uh, but I had I very specifically knew what I wanted I wanted a dark gray linen and really struggled to find something that I liked had a few fails along the way but um, one day Knit Picks were having a sale and I found this yarn and I figured it would be just what I wanted and it would work really well for the lace as well as the body. I've had this for ages and I kind of then soured on the tenure a little bit just because, abs oh sorry I'm very pale. Um, I soured on the tenure a little bit because everyone and their mother was knitting one and I have a certain buck wildness of spirit that I don't like to be doing what everyone else is doing. Um, and I've actually felt that way. There's been a couple of Caitlin Hunter patterns that I've wanted to make. And because everyone's kind of made one, it's like, well, I don't want to be like everyone else. But that's stupid. That's really stupid. If you like something, you should just do it. It doesn't matter if everyone's doing it or if no one's doing it. If you like it, just do it. So that's what I'm gonna do hopefully this will be on my needles really really soon um, I'm trying to think when I'll cast it on I kind of want the lace to be done so that I can have a nice bit of stockinette to be doing for a couple of like family things I have going on in the next few months so stay tuned but really really psyched for that one and double speaking of Caitlin Hunter because when am I not? I'm sorry if there was a bit of a noise. That was just a reminder text for my physio appointment tomorrow. Exciting life I lead. Um, I also want to make a Zweig sweater by Caitlin Hunter. Because um, I just, I have seen a few and I got really inspired um, 
for a color scheme that I thought would look amazing. So I don't actually have a main color. I can't decide whether I want to do like a black or a dark brown. Um, there is a color that Miss Click Clack does, who is an Australian dyer, um, called Melbourne Black, which is a really nice blackish color that I think would look really cool. Um, or then there's Black Coffee by um, Knit Craft and Knittery that could be really nice. So I'm not quite sure what main colour I want, but I do know that I want that little lace panel um, in the yoke, the yoke of the jumper to be this colour. And this is Stress Knits Yarn in the colourway Sweet Disposition which is so pretty. It's got these all these different colored pink all the way through it. I really love this dark section. And these kind of dark like brownie pinks are why I think it would look really nice with like a dark brown jumper, but also I think it would look really great with a black. So I'm thinking Melbourne Black by Miss Click Clack when she reopens her shop in the new year. But I bought this whoa, a little while ago. Um, I think the exchange rate did a bit of a dip, so I bought some American yarns. Um, but yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. Stacey's yarns are so lovely, and I can't wait for this to be the yoke of a Zweig. But that one, as I said, I don't have the main body yarn, so it's going to be quite a bit further down the list. Oh, that's that same text message reminding me that I have an appointment at 11.30 tomorrow. So, next, this is yarn from Fibersmith in Melbourne that I spoke about before, and this is more of Leslie's hand dyed yarn. This is the same base that I knit my lady slipper top out of. If you go back a few episodes, I talk about that one, um, but it is her um, alpaca linen silk base, so it is 51% baby alpaca, 25% linen, and 24% tussa silk, which means it's really beautiful, so drapey, has a gorgeous halo to it, and really softens. You can even feel it softening in your hands as you're working it. Um, an amazing base, and this colour is just called Naturally Dyed with Eucalyptus and Iron. So it's this beautiful greeny warm gray so pretty so I want to use this to knit the is it called Yuri or Yumi bear with me one second let's go to my queue go to Ravelry we've got Ravelry right here it is called the Yuri top by Amy Miller and it is an issue 16 of Ami Risu magazine it's a really pretty just short sleeved kind of baby doll style top and I think it will be really pretty in this pale grey colour. It will be just a really versatile top um, and yeah, it's going to look so nice. As you can tell probably from quite a bit of this, love me a bit of grey. Um, every time I get yarn and show my mum, she says, are you really going to knit another grey jumper? And the answer is yes, I am because I just love, 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 love grey. Um, but this is just such a beautiful colour. Leslie does amazing amazing job with her with the hand dyed yarn from Fibersmith it is all absolutely stunning just lovely three more to go <laughs> um, and all of it the rest of it is Brooklyn Tweed so this is Fauna by Brooklyn Tweed on Shelter it's this really nice kind of warm brownie green with lots of different colored speckles through it I'd originally bought this yarn to make a bracket hat, which is a pattern by, is it by Whitney? Whitney Hayward. I think it's issue three of Liner Magazine. It's three or four. I'm pretty sure it's issue three. It's the one that has the hay on the cover. Um, but I bought this yarn specifically to make the bracket hat and I just can't make it work. Um, I really, really struggle to get gauge. Um, I've gone down like four four needle sizes and it is still just massive. Um, I've probably cast it on four times with this yarn, tried different needle sizes, tried everything and 
it just, it just, this yarn does not want to be a bracket hat. It would look amazing, but it's just, it's just not happening. So I'm going to use this instead, this lovely fauna color to make, I think, the Link Hat by Emily Green, um, which was in the Christmas they I did put in the holiday collection but I think I don't think it's a new pattern it could be I could be wrong but it's actually written for shelter so much more confident that it will work it's a really cute cabled hat um, I do have to find some other yarn because I really do want to make the bracket hat um, but I'll have to find some different yarn I might even go and just buy the recommended yarn and see how that goes because I mean it was just it was just so big it wouldn't even be just that I have a small head and um, yeah it was just massive and I just was really really struggling to get it to look not like it's made for a seven foot tall person <laughs> so this will be the bracket hat and now for a yarn that looks incredibly similar this is one of the new colorways of shelter which is Yellowstone which as soon as I saw the new colorways, I knew that I had to get Yellowstone for something. It's not dissimilar to Fauna. Look, they're pretty similar. This one doesn't have the multicolored speckles through it and it is a lot yellower. And it's even a lot yellower than I expected. I mean, it's called Yellowstone, so I don't know why I was so surprised when it came and it was this beautiful golden color. But it's this beautiful rich gold. I apologize that I am looking like a ghost weird cloud just came over let's see if I move back a bit maybe I'll be out of the light nope if I move this way a little bit that's ever so slightly better but this is a um a really pretty color and I got a bunch of skeins of this to make the void shawl by Melanie Berg it's from issue maybe 10 of Amirisu um, which is an amazing issue. If I could get my hands on that, it's out of print. Um, if I could get a hand, my hands on a paper copy, I would probably explode because it's so nice. So many good patterns. The Void Shawl is super popular. I had a look through people's projects. A couple of people have made it out of shelter before. And so that's kind of how I worked out how much I needed. And yeah, really psyched for that. I think it's going to be so pretty in this warm, warm yellow color. I wear a lot of black and gray. So I think this nice pop of a warm shade will be really nice over my jumpers. So the last project I have to talk to you about is probably going to be my Christmas Eve cast on and it's some more Brooklyn Tweed. I don't know why I'm in such a Brooklyn Tweed kick at the moment but it's this amazing colour quarry in garnet and I'm going to make a hat that I have made before. Um, it's the Luoto hat from issue four of Liner. And I'm going to be making it in this beautiful red color. I have made it in a gray for a friend um, and I loved it. It looked really great. Um, it was super cozy. And I just really feel like I would like a red, a red beanie. Um, so I love that pattern and I would really love to have one for myself. So. I think I'm going to wind this up and cast it on for Christmas because it's a nice, nice cheery colour and it's a super fast knit. So that is the majority of my languishing waiting to be cast on stash. And I know uh, compared to some people that's not going to be very much, um, but it is even just looking at that yarn sitting next to me, it is overwhelming. So I just would like to get all all of it into garments as soon as possible. Um, I do have kind of a bit of a collection of sock yarns, but those don't kind of stress me out as much because they're smaller projects and I know that I will get to them eventually. Um, so I've quite a few, excuse me, <clears throat> I've quite a few different self-striping sock yarns, but they, I'm kind of happy to leave them because they'll just can sit there and wait but these like larger quantities of heavier weight yarns and just larger quantities of fingering weight yarns as well have been really stressing me so thank you for sticking with me through this bumper christmas special episode of the simple knit podcast um if you have any languishing 
um, garment quantities of yarn in your stash, please let me know down below. And if you have projects for them as well, I'd love to know what you will be knitting in the new year. So I'd just like to thank you all for, um, for your viewership over the last couple of episodes, the last few months of this year. Um, I hope that you have a safe and relaxing um, holiday period, regardless of the holiday you celebrate, and that the new year brings you all um, happiness and peace and a lot of fun, crafty times. Um, best wishes from me, and I can't wait to see you all for some more fun knitting and crafting in 2019. Take care. Bye.